I was a journalism major in college. I dreamt of writing for Rolling Stone, and then Rolling Stone got really political, and that wasn't really my cup of tea. And I fell into this. I auditioned for the job many years ago, and I just really loved the idea of being able to write and be creative and say what I wanted to say. A lot of people say the same thing, that you wouldn't be where you are without the support of the people that listen to the show, but that's really true. And especially as a woman, I think it's so cool when most of the people that like me are other women. It's hard to find women that like other women, so that's always been a goal of mine, and I love it. We call our fans family, and people come up to us and say, gosh, I feel like I know you. You do. Now, don't hug me when I'm peeing in the bathroom. I hate when people literally pick their head over the saw. But you do know me, you do, you do. You know everything about me. <laughs> I got recognized by someone that I would not think would have been a fan. And it was mid-exam at the gynecologist. She screamed and I thought something was wrong. <laughs> oh my God, I know you. And she slid over on her stool and I was like, no. What's wrong? And she's like, no, you're Jenna, I'm a fan. I, yeah, so that was the first, the first time I ever really got recognized and the most awkward situation imaginable. I try not to get in my own head about it, honestly, because it can be a little intimidating every day if you think, there might be someone that's very depressed today that's listening to the show. So you better be upbeat, you better be funny, but the reality is, I am me, I've been depressed, I've been heartbroken. You share those things and it's in those moments I think people relate to you the most, that you feel the most human. Not in the cool things we get to do or the celebrity interviews or you know, wearing a cool outfit or whatever, it's in the moments that are uh, really kind of upsetting and relatable. Three things they don't know about me. Gosh, so hard because I, I really share almost everything. Uh, I read a lot of books may sound boring, but I really do. I mean, I'm actually sleeping with books in my bed. So I'll read books, pick up another one. I am obsessed with scary things. More, more so than people realize, they know I love Halloween, but I've watched every scary movie that's available. Uh, I've seen everything in the horror genre. I would say I cry almost daily over cute animal videos, over meaningless things get me very emotional. <laughs> I'd always wanted a project for myself. It was just finding the time to do it. And so I kind of let my own family, you know, set of fans dictate what I did with that. And they often ask me about what I do for fitness and what I do for skincare. So I started a wellness fitness brand. And man, that's taken a lot of time. <laughs> so that's basically what I do. When I leave work, I do my own business and uh, take care of my pug. Very exhilarating stuff. What was one of the best lessons that kid might have taught you? He taught me a lot about preparation, to always be prepared. I think a lot of people look at our job and they think, wow, that's cool, you roll in, you talk on a microphone for four hours and you leave. And uh, I think the goal is to make the job appear effortless. Like with anything in talent, you want it to seem very effortless. But the reality is he was big on preparation. He would always write down at least the first thing he was gonna say, whether he was giving a presentation or a speech or telling his own personal story on the show, he would write it down. And I'm big on that myself now. I write things down all the time before I go speak somewhere, before I do a celebrity interview. I over-prepare. You will always be prepared if you over-prepare, yeah.